I woke up half an hour late. I got dressed, bolted down the stairs. I was halfway down when I heard it. The soft, familiar muffle of the morning news. I stopped for a second. My mum must have left the telly on before she left. Down the corridor and into the living room and see the sofa. My spot, occupied. Her hands gripped the arms of the chair and her attention didn't even flinch away from the screen when I entered. People on the TV were marching down a large open street that I didn't even recognise. The crowd flowed forward as one with signs and huge colourful posters attracting the eye. The camera cut to some of the faces, sweaty and mournful with eyes wide and enraged. Her expression mirrored theirs and I almost didn't recognise her. She was there with them and a part of me wanted to join her. I didn't even know why they were marching. It's a people already dying complication. Well, it's not really complicated, it's just some things are less persuasive, sort of a vibe that goes around in rotation, awaiting relentless patience. It's one of those simple calculations. My words have power, but I don't really know how to use them. It's like a tightness in my chest and I can feel it bubble up to my neck. My vocal cords are straining, but the words just aren't leaving. Dissipating down my spine, and more and more anger drags up each and every time. So what stops me? Nah, I'm tired of solving mysteries. Stops me questioning someone that crosses the line. How many bodies in the street do you need before you get the courage to speak? Or even before you see that we don't believe differently? While I'm contemplating what to write next, I'm so close to buying at any moment. I'm not scared of fat rats. Pack up your bag and tell me where the pieces are. We didn't have time to spare. Sabine and Nessa didn't have time to spare. Jaden Moody didn't have time to spare. It's just me and my mum. But oh, we've shown you a little sum. She came for a better life for her and her daughter. A warrior. Me. Okay, let, okay, me, let, me, frame. let me frame this. You guys ever stop next to a stranger and listen to their conversation? Because I did today. And I'm not sure if I should have. I mean, the look in this kid's eyes as he cried. I'm terrified of the thought that... So maybe next time it'll be a friend? Their mum. Or dad. Can't say I wasn't glad when I heard her name living up. People shouldn't be dying because of hate's thriving. For a reason that we'll probably never understand. No one. Zero. Nada. None. 
I mean, this kid was talking about how he was scared for his dad. His dad should be scared for his son. Because that's normal. People mention knife crime and you never think white. You can hear our friends just laugh and joke. But are we aware of what that promotes? I should call them out on what they say. I'll send them to be a better person than they were yesterday. I'm not perfect and I won't claim to be, but it's my duty as a friend. No, it's my duty as a human to tell them that their jokes can get real. You fight tooth and nail for me. I'm not bad that. I'm not it, okay? I'd hate to think that I'd be left alone just because some lad thinks my dad's life is worth less than his own. Just because he was black. Black and beautiful. Could have been like my brother, reciting his rights peacefully. One disrespectful look, one angry thought away from being tackled to the ground. And it can happen a thousand times over to someone, not just someone, someone's mother, someone's father and son. I'm in no man's land not knowing whether to duck or stand. Frightening. Honestly, it's frightening. He looked suspicious. It was strange, that. She wasn't following the rules or the regulations. He was just minding his own business. Her clothing, his shoes, her hair. How can I apologise for my past actions? You mean your racism? Yeah, my racism. Say sorry. Sorry? Congratulations, you just apologised. And that's all I need to do? Pretty much. I'm sorry for all the times I made fun of your hair or let the guy ask the end pass. So you've solved racism and now you're apologising for something that he did? Yeah, but what he did was wrong. Yeah, but saying sorry doesn't solve anything. Then what can I do? Have a conversation with him next time he asks for the impasse. What if I don't know what to say? Educate him. Your voice is much more likely to get through to him than mine. But what if I don't know what to say? Educate yourself first. My schooling, like everything else in my life it seemed, was an entanglement of contradictions. My primary school was not as mixed as my secondary, where the ratio of children hailing from around the globe seemed to be at least half of the student body. But there were still a fair few black and brown children in every class, and the economic differences between the families in the school were vast. Like my house, my primary school sat in the nexus between Highgate, a leafy, very wealthy, overwhelmingly white London semi-suburb, and Archway, an area not quite as rough as nearby Tottenham, but still nonetheless an area of concentrated council estates, packed with the children of Irish, Caribbean and Cypriot immigrants. My primary school was probably one of the better ones in the area, and so attracted slightly more of the Highgate crowd than the Archway lot, but that seemed to only highlight how differently we were treated by some of the teachers. Educate yourself first. to the point where I thought it was me. Can I touch it? I bet it's well nice having hair like yours. Maybe I'm imagining these eyeballs glued to me. Do you go to school like this? Would they, would they even let you? Maybe, Maybe she, she didn't, didn't just, just touch, touch my, my hair, hair a bit, a bit too, too willfully. willfully. When I was a baby, my hair was really afro-y. My hair's proper frizzy now, but like on you, it suits you. From my earliest memories, my hair was presented as a problem that needed to be managed. The deeply entrenched idea of managing black women's hair operates as a powerful metaphor for societal control over our bodies at both micro and macro levels. That could have been that girl over there. The one with the long blonde hair with highlights. Highlights that accentuate her privilege, how she can walk into any salon 
and have anyone do her hair. Her hair flips cause standing ovations and end wars. My hair flips start race wars and conversations about professionalism in the workplace. I have to learn from a tender age that my hair is the basis of my survival. Maybe that's what made them fear black men. A 6'3 black man can't be tamed as easily as a 5'1 woman, they say. I can't compare to her. It's her with the real hair. Hair that dances and embraces the wind. Her hair is tranquil and flows like a river. My hair. Yes, my hair. Shrunken mess on top of my head that resembles crumpled paper. I was raised to love, feel and help. But people still seem to fear me because of my reflection, my religion and my skin. Where exactly do you expect us to go? We want to be heard, not beaten or punched, left broken, black hand. You know we still get gripped together, right? People yeah, still label us the same. But we say and, and say, say again. again. How, How can that realistically be the case? case? My granddad is someone who doesn't think before they speak, someone who doesn't bite their tongue. That person who has that strong opinion, no matter how offensive or wrong it is, they just can't help themselves. It's an impulse, a habit, one that they'll probably never get out of. And manipulating, hateful, he can be so cruel, expressing prejudice and bitterness. Whilst there is a community, a community full of despair, one which has been fighting against his lens for years and years and years. Exhausting. Exhausting. I must admit that I listen to him. Don't we all just trust what our family says when we're not old enough to know any better? Maybe people like my granddad are a lost cause. He, he's lost himself. His own thought process. I mean, he can barely remember me these days. I tried to say what's wrong to try and help him understand. Nothing ever seems to work. Maybe I could really focus my energy. Maybe. Maybe I could refocus my energy. Maybe. I don't want to go against my own family. But whilst I cling on to their idea of normality, things won't change. Let's not regress back in time. Or be ignorant to think that it comes from another generation. So many people have stood where we are now. Reacting, talking, making movements. It's wanting change. But we also have laughter. It's all there. Something so sought after. Beauty in our smiles. Family that goes on for miles. History in our styles. 
There's history in my hair, child. What exactly are you afraid to ask? Want to sell it for a couple of seconds? A cultural appreciation? Or cultural abomination? What exactly are you afraid to ask? What makes you have those opinions? Why can't you acknowledge your white privilege? What is okay to say and what isn't? Do you even know what that word means? Am I saying the right thing? Why do people see some people as less worthy than others? Why do people see some people as less worthy than others? How can I make them listen? What do people achieve by being racist? What do people achieve by being racist? What should I do if I can't convince someone they're being racist? How can I change to help? What do I need to address? What does privilege mean? What does white privilege mean? White privilege is laughing at jokes instead of feeling the hope dream when you're through. So you've got black friends. Let's get a round of applause. But are they really your mate if you don't stop and pause when the fountain of hate pours? White privilege is not caring. Microaggressions like staring at people. It's like the problem isn't glaring in our face. Our discussions are cushioned by fear. Fear that by saying something wrong, all of our progress will be gone and wasted. The truth is, we've tasted the pain of racism in this century, and it's getting harder and harder to chew. I don't mind if my questions are met with suggestions hinting at an answer that we've yet to find. Because we'll find that by talking kindly instead of walking blindly, we can respect each other. Dispelling centuries of lies told to divide. I'm not going to hide, but stand side by side, confiding truths that widen my horizon. I'm trying to reach new heights, not simply arguing to decide what's wrong or right. Instead, opening the conversation, uniting the young people of our nation. To build a culture where we see ourselves in relation to the difference of others. the Indian girls that look like me. The black boys who are meant to be free. love us so lushly. That's what I want you to see. You know, we still get grouped together. People label us all the same. But we say and say again, how can that realistically be the case?
about people. Perpetrated, turned into hashtags. The trends that have dissolved. Names which disappear from our tongues. Without, without a second, second thought. thought. One step closer to stopping hate crime. Let's make our own history and we'll be another marker in time.